What's going on guys, smarthelping.com here. I've got a nice free uh, Google Sheet tool I'm gonna give to you guys. The link will be in the des description box um, if you want <clears throat> to play around with it. And when you do open it up, you'll remember just go to file, make a copy um, to create your own version of the sheet. <clears throat> so what this does is it's a nice way to consolidate your raw data into a more standard financial statement. This happens a lot in like with a QuickBooks export or some raw data export or data entry that you have. Let's say you have thousands of rows of data. It has some date on it. It has some dollar amount. And then there's some descriptor of the term. And the question is, you want to create um, a summary of what fits into each of your main you know, financial statement line items. So... One way, the, the the complicated way and inefficient way to do it would be, okay, sum ifs, you know, use the sum ifs and do, you know, sum ifs, column B, if the date matches your range, whatever period you're doing, you could do monthly, annual, quote, whatever the date range is. Um, so you match <clears throat> some of the amount if the date range falls in the range. And if the, if the description says, you know, whatever, test. And then you would do another plus and then do another sum ifs if it equals this and plus in this. And then you keep doing a whole bunch of sum ifs all in a row. That's very inefficient. <clears throat> a better way to do it that I just came across today, just thought of, is you take, you have each of your line items on your income statement. You make a new tab. I just called it lists here. And you label each one at the top so these are all my main items you could have more or less doesn't matter um, and then all you do in each list is create well you create a list of every descriptor in your description that you want to fall into revenue one and then you do for revenue two what items if it if if a line says this or this or this or whatever then it should be counted as revenue too, and so on. So then you only have to create this dynamic list, and th these can be as infinite or small as you want. It doesn't matter. Um, all you're doing is defining from your data descriptions what description falls into what, what category here, and you cannot repeat these, so you don't want to have, especially in the financial statement sense, you don't want to have test here, and test here because then you're going to double count it. So these should all be unique um, and show up only one time throughout the whole uh, list tab. So now that you have defined all the things that should fall into each of your items of your financial statement summary, all we have to do now is create this matrix. And I've done an array formula, so that's nice because it expands automatically, it goes as far as your data will go. Um, so you see here in E1, all I'm doing is array formula. I'm counting if if C is blank, then blank. So it doesn't have anything in blank. If if uh, C doesn't have any data, it won't show up here. Um, and you could make that B or A or whatever makes sense for your data. If you don't have descriptions for everything, then it might make sense to use A or B. Um, so just array formula. If C2 to C is blank, then blank. Otherwise, count ifs lists A, 2 to A, so it's counting everything in A, 2 down, for infinity, anytime anything's put in here. <clears throat> if, an a, if in that list A, 2 to A, if, if this is in it, test. And now, with the array formula here, it'll go all the way down, it'll t check everyone. So now, in the second row, it's going to check if test 1 is in revenue 1, and it is. So we have it here. <clears throat> and it's going to check every single description and it will just populate if there's a one, it'll be there, otherwise it won't. And now you have a pass fail that you can check for and you don't have to do, you know, sum ifs this, if this equals, whoop, if this equals that term and then do another sum if this equals that term. All you have to do is sum ifs B, if the date rate matches and if column E is greater than or equal to one. So you can see, actually I did um, 
greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, I'm just summing up data in B if um, the date range matches. And now, let's see, that should match 4,330, should match exactly the total amount here, 4,330, and it does. I'm going to show you what I did for a check in a second, but um, if you go to Revenue 2, you can see it does the same thing. All I did was change the list to B2, and then Revenue 3, change the list to C2, and everything else in the formula is the same. It's just changing um, the list column to check um, column C4 to see if it fits in there. And that's it. I mean, that's in, so all you do is in, you just sum up every different financial statement item based on all of that logic. Um, and you're just counting if, uh, you'll see the other thing you do have to move is, so revenue one is checking the data tab, um, E is greater than zero. Revenue two is checking if F. Revenue three is checking G. So you can see it's got it. You got to move that from E to F to G as, so the, the, the line item here should match up with the line item you're summing here. <clears throat> Then you've got cost of goods sold, um, does the same exact thing, no change in the logic and expense the same thing. And then I just did, you know, totals for revenues, cost of goods sold, gross profit, um, expenses and EBITDA. Uh, so I feel like this is really useful for anybody that has raw data exports that they have financial information in and need to create statements from it in an easy way. Um, and who have problems with descriptions, like descriptions being not all congruent or multiple descriptions for um, the same line item, and you just want it to flow into one one um, financial statement row, but it might be labeled as multiple things in your raw data. Then I did a check here at the end, so this should always equal one. If it's greater than one, let's say we had this as one, two, that's an error. That means you've double counted somewhere if your check column is greater than one, because that means that this $15 test is showing up in revenue one and expense item two here. And that means it's double counted. So the, however many columns you have over, um, it doesn't matter, but the total of all of them should never be more than one. It might be zero. If it is zero, that just means that it, your um, <clears throat> you didn't account for one of the descriptions in your list, so you should add it. Uh, but that's this is a nice way to check and make sure you've entered like all your lists right and you're pulling data right. <clears throat> the other thing you can do is if your um, if your description is really long for these things, you just need to check if it contains a term in this list. Let's say your data says, you know, I have three tests or I have um, to test for this. But you just want to say if it contains the word test, then it should pass as revenue. Well, then in your count ifs, instead of just checking for an exact match of test, you would do a count ifs and you would do a dynamic range here where you would do a, a bracket, then I think it's a post or a, a star bracket, and then I think you do the same thing on the other side. I haven't done this. I don't do this often. Uh, no, there's an and in there somewhere. I think an and. Nope, that's not right. Let's see. We do bear with me here. Uh, I can't remember. You have to do it. Check if. Let's see. This. Let's try this. And. Star. Nope, that's not right. Is it star?
Okay, let's see here. I think it's um, this star, this, and, and then you go and there it is. That's it. So, and I will actually put this out for you. Let me copy and paste it. Um, I'll put it on the list tab here just so you have it as a reference so if that that what the ant the the uh brat or the parenthesis star parenthesis c2 to c parenthesis star parenthesis what that's doing is checking if your description contains the term well in this case list or, or i mean test and here's a problem so it comes up as two so why is that an issue well you've got test and test one so it's actually going to count test in test one. So you don't want that. Um, so the only reason, the only way you can use that is if you have, if your descriptions, which, what you're checking for, are not duplicated. If whatever term you're checking for is not in two different um, description types. And so that's why... I did the exact count as match, which is just taking all that away, just checking if it actually matches 100%. Um, if if test is in here exactly, so test one wouldn't count, test four wouldn't count, um, and you can see in revenue one, it's counting test and test one as both as two. And now, actually, now that I think about it, though, that should be okay. Because all we're doing is we want to just check if this should be greater than one. It doesn't matter how many times we actually end up counting it in the given list. Let's undo this. I think this actually would still work. Um, Let's drag this over and see. I think actually, you're, and this is more efficient. This is a much more efficient way to do it. Because then you can check for the exact match as well as now, why is this not pulling over right? That means you can really do a nice check on um, long descriptions, and it'll go through. I'm just why test test one. This should be C. why that is not oh there it goes why was that not I don't understand why it didn't let me drag it back oh but now it is oh that is strange okay <laughs> that was strange why that didn't lock up so here ah here's the problem yeah you can't do it the test is now showing up in cost goes load one and revenue two so you don't want it to show up in two and that's why we don't do that's why you can only do that bracket thing and check if if it just contains the term te the text um in the description but it could have other things is because here if we go to cost of goods sold you have test four and because that says t-e-s-t -T, it doesn't matter about the four because of that count ifs it's it's counting that as part of the test one which we don't want so Okay, so we don't want to do that, but you can do that if in your descriptors, just undoing all of this. Okay, you can do that if none of these things have the same like thing like you can have 
test here, but if you have test and then something else, you're going to get duplicates over there. So um, it gets, it's a little tricky, but this is by far a nice way to turn a raw data set into a nice summary. Um, okay, so that's it. If you want to mess around with this, it's free. You can download it in the description box. And thank you for visiting smarthelping.com. If you do want to check out, I do have paid models as well. I'll link a link to that, but I've got all kinds of financial models for all kinds of industries, um, uh, use cases, uh, a lot of stuff for real estate, a lot of stuff for software as a service, inventory tracking, um, accounts payable and receivable, just all kinds of things. So it's worth a, a review here. And most of the models are only $45 one-time fee. Some are $75, and then a couple are $125. I also have bulk discounts, and um, I have like an as-a-service bundle here for like uh, all the different software as a service, product as a service, uh, security monitoring, all the different like recurring revenue user type um, services I've got here. Um, all right. Well, thanks for visiting smarthelping.com, and... I'll see you on the next one.